Hi, I'm Nick Baker. Let's take a look at using adjustment layers to change some of the qualities of your image. As you can see, I've already got a hue and saturation layer here, which I can turn off and on. I'm going to grab this and drag it to the trash. And now it's gone. So we can work on some other adjustment layers. There are lots of options. I start with a few of the standard ones. Uh, you can adjust the brightness and contrast. So I always like to play with it, push it up, push it down, see what it looks like. Uh, that's a little too bright. You can see I'm starting to blow out some of my whites. So I'm going to drag it back a little bit. Sometimes the fine adjustments are more useful than wild ones. Um, and here you can see the contrast slider. Um, so I can give it a little more contrast. And then if I go down to the layers, I can show or hide this layer to get a sense of how it compares to the previous one. So I'm not necessarily sure that's great. I can still change the brightness, push it back down, and now let's compare. Okay, let's say I like that. Um, now we can go back to adjustments. Uh, the next one I almost always work with is levels. So the levels uses a histogram. And what a histogram does is shows you in a graph what sort of colors are in your image. And it goes all the way from black up to white. So you can see there's a big black chair in this image, and there's a lot of things in the black end of the range. Um, there's a few white things, and they show up over here. And everything else is in the middle. Uh, so we can push these sliders back and forth. So if I push the black slider to the right, everything below it, everything to the left, uh, will now register as completely black. And you can see the chair is getting blacker and blacker and blacker and blacker. Again, the farther you go, the stranger the effects, the more obvious they are. So I usually only tweak things a bit. And you can see, maybe I want to take out some of the lightness and actually move the black point just up so that I get true black in my image. Now you can see since it, since it didn't hit right there, there was lots of sort of semi-black. I can also adjust the white slider. So again, as I push it down, everything to the right will be completely white. And the farther I push it, the more blown out it gets. So let's push it just a little down. And that's going to bring some of these uh, lighter shades out. The last thing is you can adjust the mid-range. And that sort of changes the balance of how much is on the dark side, how much is on the lighter side. So I'm going to play with these until I feel happy with it. You can also adjust the minimum and the maximum right out. I almost never use that. So now we've got a levels layer and a brightness contrast. If we go back to adjustments, let's add an exposure layer. Let's say I wanted to make this area down here a little bit brighter. So I'm going to push the exposure up, and you can see how it makes that a little brighter. I'm going to just tweak it down a little bit because, I, again, I don't want a crazy dramatic effect. And I can see that right this corner of the room comes a little brighter, but now my kit is all blown out. So what I'm going to do is use the mask on this layer to make that subtle adjustment. So as you can see, each of these adjustment layers has a white box next to it. And if I click on it, I can see that that's the layer mask. Um, so anywhere that it's white, that adjustment will show through. And anywhere this layer is black, the adjustment won't show through. So if I click on the white box, now I'm editing the adjustment layer. Uh, so if I say Command I, I've turned the whole thing black, and so none of my adjustments show up. But now I can grab the paintbrush, and I see it's set on white and black. You can flip those here. I want to stick with white because I'm going to draw on here. Um, you can size your paintbrush. Uh, the left bracket makes it smaller. The right bracket bracket makes it bigger. And if you go up here, you can see a few more 
options on it. So how hard it is is like how sharp the edges appear. I usually keep it pretty soft. Um, and now we're going to draw right on that layer mask. So you could see me drawing down here and on the layer mask it's showing up as white. And you can see them as I draw, the more it brings out that adjustment layer. So now if I turn it off and on, you can see that I've just tweaked the edges of the image. Let's add a little more up here. Well, it looks pretty good, but I'm blowing out the lamp. Uh, so again, still editing the adjustment layer. If I flip these back, now I'm drawing in black, I can hide that change and you'll see there it goes. I just caused it to go away. So there are lots of different adjustment layers available. I'd encourage you to play with all of them and see how they each work. Um, one of my favorites is the, the, the curves. Um, and on this one, uh, the color curves, again, you've got a histogram and it lets you very subtly change the distribution of those colors. And it, in fact, lets you do it with more than one point. So if I grab it up here, now it's sort of made things look much more vibrant. Whereas if I go the other way, it sort of spreads the color range in a very different direction. You get some really strange results as you push it far off that center 45 degree line. Um, I don't really want this on the final image, so I'm going to drag that to the trash. All right. So now I've got my image. It's got all its different layers in it. Um, and my original image is still back there under it all. Make sure all these show. So now let's move on to saving the image. Uh, if you save it as a Photoshop document, you get to keep all this information, all the different layers, all the masks, all the adjustments. Uh, so I always start by saving it as a Photoshop document. Save as, and I choose Photoshop right from the top of the list. So it's going to save it as reading.psd. And do I want to maximize my compatibility? Uh, yes, definitely. Our labs often have the latest version of Photoshop, and your professors might not, or your professor might have downloaded the latest, but our labs are out of date. Uh, this way, even if it's not the exact same version, they can still open this file. Um, so this is great for saving all the internal information. Um, but you might also want to create another JPEG image, like what this came from. Uh, so to do that, I would go up to Layer and say Flatten Image, and boom. It, it collapsed all of those layers onto the background, and so baked in all of those adjustments. You see they're not here anymore. I can't change them because the image is totally flat. But that means that I can save it as a JPEG, uh, which also doesn't take any layers. So now we're ready for JPEG. Um, I don't want to overwrite my original, so I'm going to say reading adjusted and say save. On the JPEG options, uh, please don't compress it. Uh, you'll regret it. Um, you lose a lot of quality. But at the maximum, uh, you basically don't see any change. Now, if you were to open this image and save it again and open it and save it again, over time those errors would uh, compound and you'd see more and more degradation. But for one or two saves, you should be fine. And baseline standard or baseline optimized makes it a slightly different size image, but there's no change in quality. So I almost always use baseline optimized quality 12 and say OK.